Hey guys, how are you today? Hopefully you're having a wonderful week like always. Today I'll be listening to some Billy Idol again. Now, it's been over a year since I've listened to Billy Idol on my channel. I listened to his debut album from 1982. I did a video for it and I had so much fun doing that video. I don't know why it's taken me so long to do another Billy Idol video, but let me tell you, I am still obsessed with that album. I still go back to it quite a bit. And my intention was always to follow up that video with his second studio album, Rebel Yell, but I never got around to doing it. But I thought this was perfect timing to finally listen to some Billy Idol again. Now, Rebel Yell did come out in 1983. And from my understanding, this is his most successful album out of all the albums in his discography. Now when it comes to the title of the album, Rebel Yell, Billy Idol got the idea for the album's title after attending a party with the Rolling Stones and drinking the Rebel Yell whiskey. I have never heard of this Rebel Yell bourbon whiskey before. Okay. Looks good. Or maybe it isn't. Maybe it is. I don't know. And oh, oh, what's that? <laughs> Some whiskey, speaking of whiskey and vodka, and some Costa Rica rum as well. Haven't tried it yet, haven't opened it. I'm excited to try it though. <laughs> now there are nine tracks on the album. The album is 38 minutes, and I don't recall hearing any of these songs before, but like always if I start listening to a song and it sounds familiar, I'll let you guys know. But anyway, let's get into it with a track one, Rebel Yell. And I just realized I already have my headphones on. During that entire intro, usually I don't put my headphones on until I start listening to the first track. But I was doing my thumbnail for this video before recording this video, so I forgot I still had the headphones on, but whatever. <laughs> And that was track one, Rebel Yell, and I definitely wanted more, 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 Yes Billy. I was rocking out, I was bopping my head, I loved the production of course, and the synths, and his voice, his aggressive yet sensual voice, and his bad boy image, his bad boy lyrics, but I really do like the lyrics of this track. He very much is interested in this person. Last night, a little angel came pumping on my floor. She said, come baby, I got a license for love. And if it expires, pray help from above. In the midnight hour, she cried more, more, more. With a rebel yell, she cried more, more, more. In the midnight hour, babe. He also says how he'd sell his soul for this person, for money to burn for you. I give you all and have none, babe. And it looks like this song was pretty popular back in the 80s. It appeared in many 80s movies. The song was also parodied on Sesame Street in 1986. <laughs> Just a great song to rock out to, and I quite enjoyed myself. So let's move on to track two, Daytime Drama, aka soap operas. <laughs> okay, that was a lame joke. <laughs>
And that was track two, Daytime Drama, and I was quite intrigued by the production on this track. It was quite mesmerizing. His voice, I mean, I don't need to tell you, his voice is so seductive. <sighs> Billy Idol is filled with attitude and sass, and that's one of the reasons why I enjoy his music. <laughs> He also seems like one of those guys who would do anything for you to protect you and to win your heart. And even though he has this tough exterior, I think he is a little bit of a sweetheart deep down. <laughs> day by day, hour by hour, what haunts my nighttime starts my daylight. Oh, I like that. What haunts my nighttime starts my daylight. Oh, I really like that part. Even good friends have no answers. Beautiful stars. Don't touch her, man. I want her over and over again. In my daytime drama, beautiful star. When I ask the question for an answer, see you dancing, romancing what I want. My beautiful star. I do like the juxtaposition between the hard rock production of the song and the beautiful and tender lyrics. You're my hope for a future beautiful star. I do prefer track one, Rebel Yell, over this track, Daytime Drama, but I would still listen to this track again. But let's move on to track three, Eyes Without a Face. <laughs> And that was track three, Eyes Without a Face. Wow, this song was absolutely beautiful to listen to. I don't know, this might be my favorite track on the album so far. I really enjoyed the production, of course. It was quite atmospheric for me anyway. Kind of teleported me to my own little zone in my own little world and... His vocals also, I quite liked, and the lyrics, I like the story of the lyrics, and the female vocalist, I believe she's singing French during the chorus, Eyes Without a Face. Now this was released as the second single from the album, but Rebel Yell was the first single. I'm really happy this was chosen as a single. The song is notable for the female voice of Perry Lister. She appeared in the band video for Hot in the City. So I was correct. She does sing French in the song, and the lyrics are French for Eyes Without a Face. The title of the song refers to the English title of the French director George Franju's 1960 film. It revolves around a plastic surgeon who is determined to perform a face transplant on his daughter who was disfigured in a car accident. Well... The more you know. I'm all out of hope. One more bad break could bring a fail. When I'm far from home, don't call me on the phone to tell me you're alone. It's easy to deceive. It's easy to tease, but hard to get release. 
eyes without a face. I spent so much time believing all the lies to keep the dream alive. Now it makes me sad. It makes me mad at truth for loving what was you. Ah, so this is a heartbreaking song. And I wasn't expecting the lyrics on this album to be so... Not lovey-dovey, but he does touch on relationships and this person and his love for this person quite a bit. I also wasn't expecting a song like this to be on an album called Rebel Yell. Um, and I, I think this track is wonderful. The music plays against the dark tone of the lyrics with a ballad-style melody comprised of yearning verses that slowly build emotion and a quietly wrenching chorus that reveals the emotional tension in a cathartic, manner. Now I might be overreacting, but out of his first two albums, his debut and now Rebel Yell, I think this might be one of my favorite tracks from him. And when talking about the song, Billy Idol said, I began to write words that, in some disguised form, spoke about my life in New York and the relationship gone wrong. Perhaps I was reflecting on my own touring infidelities. In a way, those can leave you feeling soulless, especially if you're already in a relationship that you value, but are degraded by looking elsewhere for additional sexual kicks. So it looks like he was on tour and he was still in a relationship. Okay, well this makes sense. I'm on a bus on a psychedelic trip, reading murder books trying to stay hip. I'm thinking of you and you're out there. So he's thinking of his relationship they are all the way somewhere in another city, and he's on a touring bus, and <sighs> it's sad. He did talk about his touring infidelities, so maybe when he was on the road during his tour, he was sleeping around, yet he still had this relationship back home. But anyway, let's move on to track four, Blue Highway. <laughs> And that was track four, Blue Highway. Yes, another great song on the album. I've really enjoyed myself. I think all the songs I've listened to so far have been very consistent. And this is a very cohesive album. And I'm just really enjoying myself. There was something quite animalistic about his vocals at times on this track. And it definitely has that catchy chorus that gets stuck in your head. You know we gotta ride on the blue highway, walk with electro glide on the blue highway. I like that. I like the lyrics on this album. Way below to Christ on my highway, yes I almost died on the blue highway. Why do I miss you? Why did I kiss you? Because you know we gotta ride on the blue highway. I don't know why it's a blue highway. Why not a red highway? Why not an orange highway? Why a blue highway? I don't know, maybe there's no significance to the highway being blue, but now that I think about it, blue usually invokes sadness and sorrow and I guess gloominess. So he does sing about being on the road and being in this relationship 
His girlfriend is back in the city and he's on tour. He's on the road on the touring bus. So maybe he's feeling down and blue. So my good friend, the super drug ends. I go up to the stratosphere. So obviously, I mean, he's obviously probably high too. <laughs> I don't know. These are lyrics that I feel like you can usually only come up with when you're intoxicated. <laughs> but hey, what do I know? Anyway, let's move on to track five, Flesh for Fantasy. Oh, track 5, Flesh for Fantasy. Another intriguing song on the album, and I will say at times, his voice sometimes reminds me of David Bowie. I am curious to know if Billy Idol was inspired by David Bowie. There's a change in pace of fantasy and taste. Do you like good music? Do you like to dance? Hanging out for a body shop at night? Ain't it strange what we do to feel alright? So when will you call? I am experienced face-to-face -face and back-to-back. -back. You see and feel my sex attack. Sing it flesh, flesh for fantasy. This is, this is a hot song. He also says, I sing for culture. Father loves his son. Mother's daughters too. It's an old, old story. Cries the new world too. That's an interesting part of the song lyrically. I don't know what it has to do with the rest of the song. And just like the other songs I listened to, the production, the instruments, the guitars, just pure ecstasy to listen to. Now it looks like in Billy Idol's autobiography, when talking about the song, he said, I wrote the lyric as if it were a sexual advert someone had placed in a newspaper or magazine. Do you like good music? Do you like to dance? Oh, okay. He also goes on to say, It is strange what mental and chemical processes our minds and bodies go through that send us searching deep into the night for sexual satisfaction. Some people took my advert literally. Mainly, it's a song that spoke to the audiences of the time who were in the process of discovering their own sexualities. Now, obviously, 1983 was long before the internet and online dating, dating apps. I mean, in today's culture, you can find someone to hook up with instantly, within minutes. But back then, you had newspapers, I guess. What else? Um, bathhouses, and brothels, and libraries. <laughs> I imagine you could be overly explicit in your newspaper adverts, so how did people hook up back in 1983? That's such a dumb question. Obviously, I mean, bars and clubs, I think that was probably the main attraction. Bars, nightclubs, and... Oh, telephone. What are those things called? Telephone sex talking. What's it called? You dial a number and there's a woman on the other end and she talks dirty to you. I mean, even though hooking up is much easier nowadays, in a way, it's also harder because back then, 
you actually had to go up to the person and talk to them. Whereas nowadays, you're talking to, at times, a faceless profile and the communication's horrible because it's texted and you don't see the person face to face. So in ways, I miss that human interaction that has seemed to have gone away with the internet and dating apps. I also feel like, at least from my experience, people nowadays are more hesitant to meet up with strangers. Whereas back then, I mean, I wasn't around in 1983, so maybe people back then were more open. And it's honestly not as easy to hook up nowadays as a lot of people think it is. For some people, it's quite easy, but for others, and in general, like I said already, people are hesitant to meet strangers, and it's just a different world. But anyway, we are going to move on to track six, Catch My Fall. And that was track six, Catch My Fall, and initially I didn't know what to make of this song, but then the saxophone kicked in, and I grew to kind of enjoy this track. To me, the highlight was the saxophone and, of course, the synths, but overall, compared to all the other songs I listened to, I thought this song was a little boring. <laughs> I definitely couldn't get into it as much as the other tracks, and... I didn't find the overall song to be particularly interesting. Catch My Fall, If I Should Stumble, Traveled and Unwound by Old Truth. I've laid my head on the rock of youth, trusted and then broken my own words just to keep me free in this mad, mad world. If I should stumble, won't you catch my fall? Now this was selected as the fourth single from the album and I don't know how I feel about that. Who knows, maybe a lot of people like this song, but to me, it kind of pales in comparison to all the other tracks I listen to. I feel like there could have been better single choices. But anyway, let's move on to track seven, Craig Call. <laughs> That was track 7, Craig Call, and this was a fun, aggressive song on the album and the guitars, and it was just very enjoyable to listen to. I didn't enjoy it as much as quite a few of the other tracks, but I do prefer this track over the prior track, Catch My Fall. I mean, this is a nighttime album. I'm listening to this album during the day, in the mid-afternoon, and it feels wrong. <laughs> 
This is a nocturnal album. If you're waiting for a call, there's double trouble, the pressure of it all. This line is due for communication. Now if you've lost all reason, crank call. Ain't no fun at all. There's nothing new in heaven or hell. Hate has taken control. They're breaking the kids. They're beating the bids. And that is all they feed on. Crank call. I wasn't as intrigued by the lyrics on this track as I was all the others, but what did it for me was the instruments and the overall production. We are gonna move on to track 8, Do Not Stand in the Shadows. And that was track 8, Do Not Stand in the Shadows, and this is probably one of my least favorite tracks on the album. Just like the other couple of tracks I listened to, Catch My Fall and Craig Call, I just didn't find this song particularly interesting or memorable. I am a little disappointed in this second half of the album, starting with Catch My Fall. The highlight of the song, of course, was the drums and the guitar work. That was great, but... The general melody of the track, the lyrics, it just was kind of generic. Arts which beat to a precise beat, painted shadows on the wall, will cut out cars, drive out bars, all for one, one for all. Like teenage sleaze and comic book cheese, with your heart on your sleeve, well you know you won't run, we won't hide. I will say he does go, oh, a lot on the album, and roars and little screams, which I like, little quirks here and there. Wow! That was kind of bad. But we have come to the end of the album, track 9, The Dead Next Door. Watch the sky. And that was the final track, The Dead Next Door, and I personally think this song possesses the most ambiance out of all the songs on the album. I just like the atmosphere of this track. It's very atmospheric and very pretty to listen to. And it was an interesting way to wrap up the album. It was quite somber. Watch the sky for a reason why I was safe here. Sunday was hot, Monday was not. For the dead next door. The heat of the day fade, fades away, fades into the night. The heat of the day, suffering away for the dead next door. A little bit of a spooky song. He is touching on, obviously, death and 
pass it on. Don't hear their cries, don't eat out of their hands, ghosts don't die. I don't know if I would listen to this song again. I actually maybe would just for the ambiance of the song and the general atmosphere. I really enjoyed that. So that was all nine tracks of Rebel Yell by Billy Idol and I very much enjoyed myself just like his prior album, his debut album. This was a joy to listen to. I had so much fun and a lot of head bopping and oh! And just his personality, his little quirks and his sexiness his sex appeal, his, his toughness also, but also he's quite sentimental, which is something I didn't know about him. He has this hard, tough exterior with that lip, <laughs> the iconic lip, but I think he's very much a sweetheart deep down, and he does care a lot, and he sings about love and relationships on this album. The general production of the album, in my opinion, was fire. The guitars, the drums, and the synths, and the saxophone, and other instruments I probably didn't pick up on. That was a joy. And also the lyrics. I did prefer the songwriting on the first half of the album. I think that's where it's the strongest. I was a little disappointed in the second half of the album, starting with track six, Catch My Fall. I didn't find the last, I was gonna say the last four tracks, but I did find track nine, The Dead Next Door, quite intriguing. So I'll say tracks six through eight, Catch My Fall, Crank Call, and Do Not Stand in the Shadows. I think for me personally, those are the three weakest songs on the album. Upon its release, Rebel Yell received positive reviews from critics and was a commercial success. Now this is Billy Idol's highest rated album. It's also his most successful. Now this might come across as a stupid question, but I genuinely don't know. And it says that the album has strong influences of new wave music. What is new wave music? New wave is a broad music genre that encompasses numerous pop-oriented styles from the late 1970s and the 1980s. Now it looks like it encompasses punk rock, power pop, bubblegum disco, electronic, glam punk, glam rock, pub rock, progressive rock, rhythm and blues, and reggae. There's also a subgenre of cold wave and dark wave. I really do like this new wave aesthetic to the album. And like I said already, it's very nocturnal. This is a nighttime album. You do not listen to this album during the day. I would definitely go back to this album again many times and I think it's an enjoyable Billy Idol album from the 80s. So what did you guys think of the album and what are your impressions of it? Now hopefully I don't wait a year to do another Billy Idol video. And I really do want to listen to his third studio album right away. I don't know when I'll do it, but it looks like his third studio album is called Whiplash Smile, that cover. That album artwork, dear god. He could melt butter with that lip. <laughs> so look out for that video next time, and thanks for watching, guys. You can find me on Instagram, you can find me on Twitter, you can message me, you can say, hey, how are you, and I'll see you next time. Take care.